All right, I'm excited to be here today with Amy Mareki. And uh, Amy, thank you for joining me. I'm excited for this conversation. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so let me kind of share your bio with the audience and then we'll get going and talk about how can we embody um, a more empowered self. But let me, let me share your background first. So Amy is an intuitive business coach for soul-led entrepreneurs. You know, that's why we're here because we are, we are peers. And she's been coaching, teaching, and speaking on feminine empowerment and the art of manifestation uh, for several years now. And she teaches simple personal brand strategies to help her clients get clear on their vision and to put themselves out there. And uh, if I could say attract what, what you call, Amy, your soulmate clients, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see here. Amy also teaches her clients to transform self-doubt and to embody their next level self now so they can show up and be seen and feel worthy of cha- uh, creating their dreams. And that's it, you know, embodying and creating. And that's what I want to kind of get right into with you on this topic. Um, in the notes that you had sent me for, for our conversation today, you mentioned that um, it's not so much what we do in, in business that gets results. Obviously, we do things. But it's like more pri- primary than, than the doing part is the energy in which we do it. And so I'd like for you to kind of talk about how you like to think around uh, about this. Why is the energy important? Why is the embodying and the identity important? Yeah. And so I think the, the way that I want to first approach this is just a little bit of storytelling and like my experience and how I came to um, teach on this and share about this and why I think it's so important is I, before getting into business coaching, I was an artist and a dancer and I had my own dance company and um, was very much interested in more feminine expression and dancing and um, costume designing. And I lived my lifestyle in a way where I followed my intuition and I followed what I would call divine guidance for moment to moment, just trusting the flow and the unfoldment of my life, like setting intentions, trusting that the right people and the opportunities would show up at the right time. And that the most important thing for me was just to trust myself, trust the universe and, um, almost like follow my bliss in a way, which is how I ended up creating that dance company. And then when I was in my mid twenties, I had a very traumatic experience where I, uh, I went through a breakup and I started getting more into the deeper inner healing work and learning more about inner child work and, and healing trauma in the body and uh, self-love and really slowing down and taking a look at my life and looking at things that I wanted to change of, of areas that were maybe out of integrity. And from there, I started a, a blog about self-love and about self-expression and what I was learning about masculine archetypes and feminine archetypes and really um, learning to nurture my inner child and love all parts of myself as the whole, the wholeness of who we are. Like when I say masculine and feminine energy, I don't necessarily mean gender. I mean, um, you know, yin and yang or uh, fire and water, sort of these, these different energies that are in our our consciousness. And um, I, from there felt like this inner calling, this like purpose to help others as I was doing this inner healing work. And I felt this calling to start a business Now, when I went and got certified to become a coach, I learned all these wonderful tools of how to heal the inner child and how to transform uh, our consciousness so that we could show up more embodied um, as like a leader and as our our most confident self and feel worthy and all of that goodness. Um, But then I went into learning business strategy and I really started to give my power away to the marketing experts that knew better. Uh, The like that told me what I was doing was wrong and that I need to have a clear niche and a a clear message and that I couldn't just trust my into, like I couldn't just trust my inner guidance. I had to follow their system to make it work. And it was in that state that I, 
gave away my power and I almost regressed a little bit and I stopped trusting myself and I got really in my head about learning all of the tactics and the strategy and um, the marketing. And I forgot that like, it, it's not about what we do. It's about who we're being. And when I started to like shift into that insecure, like feeling unworthy, doubting myself, that's when I actually noticed that I stopped attra attracting people, even though I was doing all of the right things. I was, had an email list, I was doing SEO, I was posting every day, but the energy behind it was, I'm not good enough. I don't know what I'm doing. And I had this sort of moment where my business at the time just kind of crashed and I spiraled into self-doubt. I had a dark night of the soul. It was like, I'm not supposed to do this. Even though like at one point it felt like such a deep calling for me. Um, and I let it all go. I actually got two part-time jobs. I went back to my nine to five and um, I had like a healing moment where I just, I had to be with myself and, and process that grief of letting go what I thought was, was the work I was meant to be doing in the world. Um, and it wasn't until actually last year when COVID hit that I lost both of those part-time jobs and sitting in that feeling of like, I, like this, just like this vacuum of like empty space. It's like, what am I here to do? And like that, that deeper calling to be of service, to share my gifts um, came back to me. And I synchronistically found a business coach and teacher that was teaching in the style that was so natural to me that was more follow your soul, was more trust your inspired downloads, was more be the energy and trust that that will attract the right circumstances for you. And within like a month of applying the things that I was already doing in my earlier years, um, I just saw massive shifts in my energy and the types of clients I was attracting. Um, the work that I was called to do, my confidence skyrocketed. And I was like, right, it is to me, like it is about who we're being when we show up and not about the actions. The actions are lovely. The strategy is lovely, but it should always come from um, like our identity first of I am, you know, whatever it is you're choosing to identify as like, I am a coach, I am a teacher, I am a leader, I do have something to give, that's who I am. And because that's who I am, I choose to show up as that version of me um, and give versus trying to get to yeah. prove that we're worthy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, this is, that's a wonderful story. And I, I love that you had that shift uh, from you know, having the early experience of being in your authentic, self power expression <laughs> and then kind of losing that and then coming back is a little bit like the hero's journey that you've already experienced in your life and that's beautiful and you said oh the strategies are lovely etc well not always lovely right <laughs> like right like the strategies yeah. can sometimes be kind of ugly and uh because the energy isn't right uh isn't aligned and when we try things that uh, are formulaic or um uh, you know, we see someone being successful and I go, well, better do it like them because obviously they know what they're doing, supposedly. Um, we, we step outside of uh, our unique expression. So I thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's really, that's really great. So um, say more about this. You, you started touching on, oh, you know, you talk about, you know, inner, inner child, you know, and talk about the feminine and the masculine. So how do you, how do you work with those? Um, I don't know if you want to first kind of define what those are first and then kind of how, how do you work with that? Yeah. yeah so when I'm working with my one-on-one -on -one clients, they come to me with the vision that they want to create. And we really focus on getting clear on that first of who do they want to become. And I call that the future self. Um, maybe it's, they want to have a thriving coaching practice or they want to be running meditation retreats or they want to, um, be hosting online workshops monthly and then thinking of like, well, what, what kind of income do you want? What kind of lifestyle you, do you want? We get clear on the future self and that vision. And I guide my clients through um, like a journey through consciousness to 
experience that in the five senses. So what would they be seeing? What would they be smelling, tasting, touching, uh, hearing? That lets them know that that reality is already real because uh, like scientific evidence suggests time and time again that the, the brain doesn't know the difference between what's imagined and what's real. So when we can put ourselves into that future reality, we can begin to train the nervous system that it is safe to experience the future. Now, what can also happen is when someone decides that is where I'm going, is it can start to kick up all of our protective me mechanisms or fears or self-doubt or judgments about ourselves or what's possible um, in the body. And that will show up as sensation. It's called the felt sense. So it might be something like, I feel a tightness in my throat or I feel like this heat in my chest or I feel like ungrounded in my feet. And the body will, will give those subconscious clues to what's kind of going on underneath the surface that's stopping them from taking action towards the future. So if they know that they need to post something but they're not doing it, like why, why is that? Or if they know, um, uh, you know, they, they should be emailing their list all the time but they're not doing, like why? Why are they so scared to take those actions that could be moving their business forward or their life forward? those sensations will come up. And that gives us a chance to actually have a dialogue with those sensations, which are very often an old part of us that is scared of change because it's scared it won't exist anymore. It's scared of death for the rebirth, the old self having to die to be reborn into the new future self. Oh, there's someone in the background, hello background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, I thought I thought there was I thought my uh, one of my pets was being let in, but I don't I don't see them. So okay. <laughs> all good. <laughs> yeah. um, and so these older parts can sometimes be called the ego, or what I like to refer to them is just an inner child, or a, a younger version of us that at some point in life learned that it wasn't safe to move forward. Maybe they had an experience in school where they were bullied um, for speaking, for being who they just, who they were. And so they learned in that experience that it's not safe to uh, be quirky or it's not safe to be smart or it's not safe to be beautiful or it's not safe to be whatever some authentic expression was for them at that time. Their essence, like children are so deeply connected to their authentic essence. They don't even have to try. They just are is who they are and we all have that inner child within us but when those things happen um we shut down a little bit and we build a protective mechanism of like it's not safe for me to express how smart i am because then i'll get bullied as a geek so we start to hide those parts of us and when we are choosing our future self it often will require us to step into our fullest expression which will scare the part of us that doesn't think it's safe. Um, and so what we do in this guided journey through consciousness, this experience is we allow the sensations to have a voice and to express their fears fully. Sometimes memories come up, sometimes uh, emotions come up, sometimes stories, limiting beliefs, fears, doubts come to the surface. And this is a good thing in session because it's allowing um, it to come up and to come out and to be seen. And I guide my clients to resource safety in the present moment inside of their body. Like, where does it feel safe in you right now? Maybe it's in their hands. Maybe it's in their heart space. Maybe it's in another part of them that is an archetypal energy. Like maybe they have an inner mother or a higher self that can nurture and love and hold that inner child as they're going through this experience of feeling scared and expressing themselves fully, which creates um, inside the psyche, like a new connection of like, oh, it is safe to be seen. You are safe here. You don't have to hold on so tightly anymore. And, and when that inner child piece feels safe, 
we often then feel safe moving forward because we know that even if something like that were to happen again, we were to get bullied or judged, we know we can handle it. We know we can take care of ourselves. We know that we can feel our feelings fully. We know that we can come into a more empowered energy and hold ourselves, contain ourselves and still take action, even if it's scary. So that's uh, the inner child. That's test. brilliant. Really well said, <laughs> really well said. Um, reminds me, I, I'm not an expert in by any means in parts work, but it reminds me kind of like IFS, internal family systems, mm -hmm. um, parts work, that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, I, it's, I, I love how you described it. And so I'm wondering then, and I can tell that, you know, clients who work with you get to experience that. And that's a very transformational experience. Do you then give them any kind of homework or is there any kind of ongoing exercise that they, that, that, that any of us can do to continue resourcing, I guess, our, our most stronger selves? Yeah. So, um, I do give my clients homework and it's usually both the inner work and then the outer action that they're taking in their life and their business. The inner work uh, is to continue practicing um, whatever came up in the surface, like in the session. So if they learned that, I'm just trying to think of an example here so it's a bit more tangible. If they learned that um, their inner child was really scared to uh, be seen. That's like the example that keeps coming up. Um, and uh, they're scared of being judged is like, give them the, the journaling exercise of like, you can write out as your inner child, what those like speak as your inner child in your journal. Like all of the fears, all of the self doubt, all the worry, what are you scared of being seen about? What about that scary? What do you think is going to happen? Is there anything else? And just let your stream of consciousness flow as that younger version of you. And then from there, resource within you. Okay, who do I want to be now, today, as my future self that can take this action to create the, the future self, the, the business or the lifestyle of my dreams? Maybe that is an empowered leader. That's an archetype that comes up really common in my sessions is my clients want to connect to their empowered leader. So what does my empowered leader have to say about being seen? How do they feel about seen? Um, if empowered leader isn't resonating, uh, sometimes like inner mother or inner father comes up in session. So how can you reparent that inner child? How can you say, I totally understand. I see you. I validate um, that your experience was really hard and it's, it's not that time anymore. Now it's safe. Now I'll take care of you. I'll provide for you. Your only job is to go play. I'll create the most fun play space for you. You can do whatever you want. You can paint, you can draw, you can dance. That's your only job. You don't have to worry about being in the driver's seat of my business anymore. You don't have to worry about making decisions. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, responsibilities, just go play. I'm going to yeah. be the one that does it. And it, it can help ease and step into that. So that journaling exercise can be really helpful. Wow. That's so interesting. So uh, that, what does that mean to create that space for the inner child to play? I mean, uh, you know, we're not talking about, all right, let's clear the schedule. All we're going to do is play, <laughs> play all day. <laughs> I mean, be great. <laughs> Well, it's, it, depended, it depends on the client. So in sessions, we do sometimes find a part in their body where their inner child can live. Maybe it's in their womb or, they, or in their heart where there's a, a space for that, um, that archetype to live and have freedom. And for a lot of people that I work with, they are um, taking action uh, almost from this wound of I'm not doing enough and I need to do more to be worthy, to be valuable. Um, and so they're forcing themselves into productivity from like a should mentality and less about um, it being like what they authentically like are called to do, um, which can create burnout when it's like 12 hour work days and hustling, um, 
And so sometimes what that looks like is scheduling in playtime. It is, what does your morning routine look like? That's really fun. That's gonna help you take care of you first. Like, like scheduling activities of like, maybe they used to be a swimmer and they haven't swam in years, but it really lights them up inside. Like doing that action of like, well, how can you create more fun in your life? Like I'm constantly giving my clients homework of like, go have more fun. Because when you are doing the things that light you up, you're connected to inspired ideas. You're connected to your authentic essence. You're filling your cup first so that you can go and give to others. So sometimes the homework is schedule and play time. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's uh, yeah, awesome. Um, Oh, gosh, our, our, our time is already uh, almost coming to a close, but I, I want you to just touch on maybe for a minute or two, this idea of kind of like your right clients or soul, soulmate clients or um, how does, yeah, talk about that. Like, how does that happen? How does that connection happen? Um, I look at it like the analogy I always, always use is dating, right? Like when you're looking for someone in a romantic relationship, you're aware that not everyone's going to be the right fit. And so it is really important that you express who you truly are in dating so that you can attract the right people. Now, what some people do when they go into business is they for, kind of forget that, 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 uh, that truth about relationships. And so they're just so in like fear of like, I don't have enough clients and I'll work with anyone and I'll just take whatever comes my way that they end up attracting people that might not be a good fit for their work. They might um, notice that they're not getting really good results or the relationship is difficult because in some way they've self-sacrificed who they are and they're just taking whatever comes. Now, I believe that um, we're not meant to serve everyone and that there is aligned soulmate clients just like there is aligned romantic relationships for us. But in order to attract them, we have to be who we are. We have to know what it is we want, what it is our non-negotiables are, um, what it is we don't want in client relationships. Uh, We need to know who our work can help, who it cannot help. We need to create boundaries around and be very, very intentional about ideal soulmate client. Sometimes this can be kind of uh, in traditional marketing, more like ideal customer avatar. Um, But to me, it's more, it's deeper than that. Cause I do work with soul led entrepreneurs who do feel like uh, who are spiritual. And so they are looking for like a soulmate in their client of like the right fit, yeah. not just yeah. anyone. Yeah. It's what's well said. Sometimes I call it our energy signature. Like it's like when we show up as our authentic self, we express, um, you know, this comes through writing, but very much uh, it also comes through video or podcasts, but it's like that energy signature. Um, yeah, there's just a fit. There's an alignment between people. Um, yeah. So it, thank you. Thank you for kind of putting that message out there as well. Um, well, Amy, how can people work with you? Uh, what's the next step that they should do to, to learn more about your, your work? Yeah. I mean, the, the easy answer is just to check out my website. It's www.amymariki.com. Yes. A-M-Y, Amy, A-M-Y-M-E-R-A-K-I. Yeah. So amymariki.com. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll, I update my current offerings there all the time. Um, so that's, that's the easiest way to find out what they can do now. Awesome. And of course you have, uh, you have your Instagram is quite, quite active and uh, and if there's, if there's any other um, social media, I will link it below as well. Thank you so much, Amy, for the work that you do and the energy with which you do it. <laughs> Thank you, George. Such a pleasure.